everyone. Nice to meet you. I hope that you're having a wonderful afternoon. Is it quite afternoon? I'm sorry, I'm not very good with time zones, but you are in Canada, right? Okay, which province? Oh, okay, Quebec? Was that what I heard? Yes, um, I thought it was very coincidental actually that I, I was having a video conference with Canada today because my dad and I were, and my sister yesterday were, were um, uh, looking at Canada on the map and we were talking a little bit about the provinces and we were trying to list all the capitals. And I think I was unsuccessful on Nova Scotia. But um, <laughs> yeah, my dad won because he had been to Canada before. And I mean so have I, but only one province. So he had one up. Okay, so back to the topic of our presentation and also a little bit about me. My name is Adora Spisak and I'm the author of Flying Fingers, Mastering Tools of Learning Through the Joy of Writing. And this is the book that I published at the age of seven. More recently, I've been working on this book. It's called Dancing Fingers. And it is a collection of poetry that I have collaborated on with my sister. So those are two projects of mine. And um, I hope to continue publishing more books, and some of them that are in the works include Young in the Skies, The Pickpocket Princess, as well as a second volume of poetry. So those are my projects, and today what we will be working on is something called The Six Traits of Good Writing, Ideas and Content. Okay, so does anyone... Um, Want to tell me a little bit about the six traits? Have you maybe studied it a little before? <coughs> Zachary? They help make your writing better. Makes your writing better? Very good. The six traits will help you make your writing better. When you use the six traits successfully, it will definitely help you to improve your writing. Okay, so um, now I see a hand raised over there, um, and I want to ask a favor of the teachers because it's a little hard to point when I'm um, using a video conferencing system like that, then um, I would ask if the teachers could please call on the students in their respective classrooms. Okay, so would you like to tell me uh, what you think the six traits of writing does and how it helps you write? And maybe if you can, it would, it, you might want to list a few of them. gives you good ideas. Very good, which brings me to what we're learning about today. Ideas, actually. Ideas and content, to be precise. So, very good. Uh, that is what we will be learning about today. And the six traits of writing definitely do help spark some write your ideas. Great. So, I will show you the slides. And this is the six traits of good writing, ideas, and content. So, please raise your hand if you are able to see that slide. Are you seeing the slide? We're all seeing the slide. Oh, wonderful. Okay. That is excellent because we had some difficulties before with keeping the slide. Oh, and I just turned it down, by the way. So, wonderful. I'm glad to hear that. Okay. So, thanks. And here are the six traits. Starting with ideas and content, and that's what we're going to be learning about today. Secondly, organization, which is also very important. Thirdly, voice, which is sort of how you speak in your writing. Fourthly, sentence fluency, making sure you don't have awkward sentences, fragments, run-ons, that kind of thing, as well as um, deciding how the sentence sounds. Word choice, and that's making sure that you don't use the same words over and over in your writing to get your readers bored. And then conventions, conventions are the rules of writing, like grammar and usage of grammar and mechanics. So, those are things that you want to remember when you are writing. So, now I would like to, to make things a little easier. When I'm calling on classrooms, I might say classroom A, classroom B, or classroom C. 
So you guys are in, it looks like now we have four different locations. Is that correct? Four different locations? Okay. Pretty much. Pretty much. So, um, starting with classroom A, and I would like classroom A to be the one where I see, let's see, in the background there's an M-E-T-I-S on the wall. Classroom A, are you okay with being classroom A? Um, I'm sorry, but um, we had we were scheduled for two o'clock singing with Shane. Is this it? No, it is not. Um, no, I don't believe that that is that is. Uh, um, in fact, that is a special session. You will have to call into a bit more details about that. There's a number you can call for that. Uh, four two five eight eight two one six zero three. So, um, yeah, again, 425-882-1603. So if you're not part of this particular session, please call that number, and we'll get the details of that cleared up. Thank you. You're very welcome. Okay, now back to the main presentation. Let's see. So raise your hand if you've ever taken a test prompt before, a prompt on a test, or any other kind of writing. Sure, if you have ever taken a prompt on a test, then just raise your hand. And you don't have to tell us about it, just raise your hand to show me. Okay. Well, let's see. We, um, a prompt on a test might be something like this. Think about a place you like to visit, what does the place look like, why you like it. So basically asking questions to get readers to sort, or to get writers, uh, sorry, to sort of think about what they want to write about and what is the purpose of their writing. So here's an example response. We made a tree house. The tree house is in a tree. The tree house is nice. It has windows and a door. So this is okay writing to start with, but we could make it better. So raise your hand if you think the tree houses are boring in general. I see a few raised hands, but uh, to me, I think personally, the tree houses are pretty cool in general and, and not too boring. So, but this writing, it's kind of, they yeah, are short sentences, it doesn't give us too much information, we have lots of questions about it, so it doesn't answer very many questions we might have about the tree house. Which leads me to tip number one, add details. For example, where is the tree? And how did they make the tree house? Did they just throw a bunch of wood into a pile? Or did they build up with foundations? Did they get a builder's permit first? I don't know if you necessarily need to do it with tree houses, but do you have some other questions about the tree house that you would like to ask? You can raise your hand if you would. Sorry, was that what I heard? Yeah. Okay, very good. What color is the tree house? Is definitely a um, necessary question to ask. What color is the tree house? So let me open up a document and I'm going to write down some of these questions so that we can answer them later and make it more descriptive. Okay, so starting with, and you are able to see the word document, right? So, starting with, what color is the treehouse? Now I would like to move on to classroom B, which, um, which is the one with the blue walls. I hope that's clear enough. So, classroom B with blue walls. Um, if any of your students would like to contribute asking questions about the treehouse, you are welcome to do so. Madison? Where is the tree house? Where is the tree house? What Very good question. What's, what's in the tree? And what's in the 